Murder Drones is absolutely amazing, but it's not perfect. Now that the series has officially ended, I just wanted to give my full thoughts on the series as a whole. This is my full series review of Murder Drones. Now I've actually been watching the series ever since its inception. I remember vividly the first teaser trailer over on Liam's channel uh, where it was also revealed that Glitch was involved and that made me even more excited. But yeah, I've been a fan ever since. In this review, I'll be talking about everything I loved about the show. But as with anything, I do have some critiques. However, before we dive deep into everything Murder Drones has to offer, I want to once again thank you all so much for getting this channel to 15,000 subscribers. I can't put into words just how grateful I am that you're enjoying my videos. This community grows stronger every single day and who knows, maybe we'll be able to hit 20k before the end of the year. I know with your support, anything is possible. Alright, so right off the bat, let's talk about the story. Murder Drones takes place on the planet Copper 9 and resolves around the worker drones hiding behind doors beneath the ice in fear of the disassembly drones, which started out as worker drones before being reprogrammed and corrupted by a program known as the Absolute Solver. One of the drones, Uzi, is tired of just hiding away and being the angsty teen that she is, wants to rebel and fight back. She eventually befriends a disassembly drone named N, who at the start tried to kill her before getting blasted in the head by her railgun. He does regenerate due to the solver, which is a whole thing in and of itself, but is a bit wonky at first and believes that Uzi is just another disassembly drone. At the start of the series, we're led to believe that the humans not only caused a core collapse that killed all humans on Copper 9, but the remaining humans on Earth sent the disassembly drones to take out the worker drones due to them not following the company's orders and gaining sentience. But later it's revealed that this was all BS and it was actually a drone named Sin responsible for it. Sin was a worker drone that previously was improperly disposed of, causing her to reboot with abnormalities due to a rare mutation that happened inside of her known as the Absolute Solver. This resulted in her becoming a zombie drone, and therefore the Solver's first host. One day, a young girl named Tessa Elliott brought Sin back from the dump, which would prove to be a huge mistake. Tessa was always fascinated by robots and actually preferred talking to them rather than humans, her favorite drones being N, V, and J. Over the course of Sin's stay at Elliot Manor, Tessa and her family started noticing these abnormalities and decided to keep Sin locked up in the basement, which would basically become her lair. Okay, I'll skip to the part where Sin corrupted just about every single one of the family's drones and turned their gala into a complete massacre, killing everyone there. Yeah, I know this is a lot. I haven't even scratched the surface of the rabbit hole that is Murder Drones lore. So I I'm going to save you all for that. I want this review to be pretty self-explanatory. That's actually one of the criticisms I see with Murder Drones is that it's just far too confusing at times. The series, despite only consisting of eight episodes, has a shocking amount of deep lore that isn't always directly explained to the viewer, making it hard for many people to follow along. I guess I feel a bit different towards there being a lot of lore, as I absolutely love lore and lingering mysteries, but even I agree that with Murder Drones, it can be a lot to handle sometimes, and I completely understand people not being able to get into the show because of it. I guess with me talking about, you know, how confusing the story can be, I guess it's probably a good idea to just get most of my criticisms out of the way right now, which there really isn't a lot of criticisms I truly have with this show, but you know, despite the flaws that the show does have, there's still so much good that this show does that I can't help but gush about it. 
But first and foremost, let's talk about one of my biggest criticisms. The pacing isn't the best. <laughs> Look, I completely understand that this show is indie and being able to still release a fully finished show is an incredible feat and I commend Glitch for being able to do something that a lot of channels just struggle to do. They're making indie animation mainstream and the fact that they were able to finish this show is just, it's awesome to see. But even I will agree that this show would have benefited from more episodes or even just longer episodes. This goes back to what I said earlier about the show not always explaining things. Everything just goes by so fast and it, the show tends to jump around so much and expects us to keep up. Like how did we go from exploring the camp to Uzi now hacking into N and V to restore their memories? And I do understand that Uzi explains what she's doing in episode 5, but there was no explanation prior to that to how we got there and no buildup whatsoever. It just kinda happened. Luckily, Intermission does a fantastic job of filling in that gap, but despite it being an amazing fan project, that's exactly what it is, so it's not entirely canon. Even though the fandom has basically all accepted that, yeah, this is canon. I also have an issue with the jump from episode 5 to 6, where we see Uzi and NV show up out of nowhere with no explanation of how they were able to track Doll to her location. This shouldn't be something that's left up to the viewer to decide. This is something that really should have been in the show itself because the average viewer will most likely just be scratching their head feeling like they missed an episode or something. I just think we should have had slower moments that not only focused on the characters themselves but also gave the viewers some much needed build up to future plot points so that it doesn't feel like these things just happened out of nowhere. This is one show that I think would have actually benefited from filler. Okay, now that I've gotten that out of my system, let's talk about the things I absolutely loved. And there's so much. Uh, let's start with the animation. My god, this show is just stunning to look at. I don't think I've ever seen an indie project that looked quite like this. Not to mention that you can watch this show for free on YouTube, and yet it looks better than a good portion of the shows that big companies like Netflix are putting out. Just everything, from the lighting, to the atmosphere, to just how shiny everything is. And let's not forget, the f***ing body horror. <laughs> this show is a feast for the eyes, and I can't get enough of it. I also love the characters so, so much and has to be my favorite by far as I just love how oblivious he is to everything and despite being responsible for the murder of hundreds if not thousands of drones, still manages to be a small bean cinnamon roll that we must protect at all costs. Uzi is the main protagonist and although she will never be N for me, she still has tons of great character moments and is the purest definition of angst. <laughs> I also love seeing the development of Uzi as this kind of shied away drone that, you know, is very not social and kind of, you know, everybody just doesn't like. She goes from that to being someone who literally saved the fucking planet. I mean, <laughs> they're still kind of scared of her, but still. V is also a character that I slowly grew to love, and seeing her go from a psychotic homicidal maniac to a slightly more caring and compassionate psychotic homicidal maniac was really nice to see. Her finally giving Uzi her trust towards the end was really sweet, and I just wish we had a bit more screen time of these two interacting with each other to really drive it home and show their relationship evolve. Now, I won't go over my thoughts on every single character in this video, but hey, if you want to see me rank every Murder Drones character, let me know in the comments. One thing that I sometimes forget about this show is that it's a horror comedy. 
Although it does tend to lean more towards the horror side of things, there are some standout comedic moments. One of my favorite moments being N allowing Bo to disassemble him and being a good sport about it. Now obviously, to some people, the comedy may not always land, but I think that's okay. Comedy is subjective after all, so something you find funny may not be funny for everyone else. Murder Drones has a very unique comedic style which may not be for everyone, but for me personally, I liked it overall. The music in this show is also incredible. I know I'm jumping around a lot, but there's just so much good I want to talk about. Uh, the good definitely overshadows uh, the negatives that I have with it. But, you know, as I was saying, the music, just my god. <laughs> uh, Eternal Dream and Bite Me are absolute bangers, and I don't trust anyone that doesn't like Knife Dance. Let's finish things off by discussing the last two episodes specifically, with me giving my thoughts on how things ended. Episode 7, Mass Destruction, being the penultimate episode, had a lot to live up to. It had been more than 7 months since the previous episode, and people were desperate to see what happened next. So was it worth the wait? Honestly, I think so. Now, some of you may disagree with me, but I was pretty content with episode 7 even after waiting for so long. My only issue with the episode itself being, once again, the pacing just goes a little bit too fast, but other than that, I'm confident in saying that this was by far my favorite episode of the entire series. I loved getting more details about Nori's past and the core collapse, plus the action in this episode was incredible. This show does action very well, and watching the fight between N, Nori, and Solver Uzi was very satisfying to watch. This episode also reveals that Tessa, who was traveling alongside everyone in order to get into Cabin Fever Labs, has actually been dead since the Gala Massacre, and it was Sin behind that helmet, this time wearing Tessa's rotting corpse. How lovely. Uzi then kicks her own mother into the flesh pit opened by the Solver, and Uzi herself also gets dragged into the hole, only for it to be revealed that Sin completely annihilated Copper Nine. Then there was more waiting. The final episode wouldn't come out until last month, and you heard that right, no second season. Well, this video aged horribly. I've already said my thoughts on how this show would have benefited from being longer, so I won't continue to rant about my feelings towards this being the end, but despite that, does this episode still serve as a decent conclusion? Well, yes? <laughs> This is a very divisive topic among the community, and it's kinda hard to answer, as you either have people that love the episode, as well as some that absolutely despised it. But overall, I enjoyed it. Sure, they did my girl Jay dirty, but I'm still for the most part satisfied with how it ends. Sin was an absolute treat in this episode, and some of my favorite character moments came from her. God and that final battle, peak fiction. <laughs> no questions asked. I also loved how we had this epic fight only for Sin to teleport at the wrong time, allowing Uzi to finish her off, ripping her core out. It happens so abruptly too, which just makes it even funnier. I do wish we had a little bit more time with the characters after defeating Sin, but besides that, I'm satisfied. It was also really nice to see them bring up the hero's journey again. A nice callback to the pilot. Now although this is the end of the series as a whole, the after credits scene kinda leaves things off ambiguously. Uzi ate the essence of the solver and now has the program itself inside of her. However, this time around, it does seem to be controlled more. I think there's a lot that Glitch and Liam can do with this, as we already know that this isn't really the end of Murder Drones as a whole, with other forms of content being on the table. So that's Murder Drones. Sure, it's not a perfect series, but I still can't recommend it enough. Everything it does right is done so well, and I still absolutely love it. I'm honestly not going to give it a rating out of 10, as I kind of just want a bit of a different format for reviews of this nature, so I probably won't be scoring anything. 
Anyway, that's gonna wrap up my full series review of Murder Drones. I know it was probably a bit unorganized, but I don't really do reviews often, so I was kind of just winging it most of the time. Let me know though, did you enjoy this review and what do you think of Murder Drones? I would love to know. But anyway guys, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, be sure to drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it, as well as be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with all my content. Until next time guys, this is Inferno, signing off.